Hey there, I thought I'd show you very quickly my new wood rack that I've built. Uh, it's about two or three days work um, from beginning to end. I'll just come closer to it so you can see. Uh, it consists of um, seven uprights uh, uh, on about 18 inch centers. I was originally going for five uprights, but then I decided because of the wall situation wasn't too confident with the fixings. I thought I'd go for more rather than less. And the shelves are going to be spaced about 18 inches apart, apart from the top shelves, which are probably just over about a foot. Uh, in new money, well, I don't care, millimeters, whatever. So anyway, moving in a bit closer, you'll be able to see the construction. Um, each uh, cantilever beam arm is um, fixed in place with two carriage bolts, 130 mil. In fact, these things. And some good chunky washers as well. They distribute the load across this gap here. So that this piece is actually pulled in tighter than it would be with just screws. These two pieces are kind of laminated on top of these uh, these beams, the two by four beams. I should say that this beam material is two by four, although nominally, but it's actually thinner than two inches. But it is almost four inches wide. Um, so yeah, these uh, pieces of um, OSB are laminated onto the outside of the um, of the uh, of the cantilever shelf brackets glued and screwed with a pocket in here basically. I'll put a still of one of them uh, prior to installation um, up. This uh, design was basically, um, um, uh, it's an old design, it's, there's lots of different variations of this if you look on the internet. Um, Fine Woodworking had one, Wood Whisperer has one, which I followed a little bit. They're all roughly the same. I started off um, as the Wood Whisperer did by putting in a plate at the bottom which everything rests on uh, because the um, I've got all my really heavy timber on the floor. I've got some really big pieces of oak and ash down there as you can see with wany, ash, wany edge ash. That's really heavy. I didn't wanna, wouldn't want to really put that on the um, on the brackets here. I have actually put my entire weight on these. They're pretty sturdy. I think they're going to be fine for what I want to put on them. Um, so it should be okay. Um, I think that's about it. I chose to put uh, carriage bolts in instead of screws to distribute the, the pressure across here a bit. And also I probably I will be taking these with me when I leave this workshop eventually. This is kind of a temporary workshop for me. Uh, but I need somewhere to stick all my um, all my uh, all my timber. So there we go. The um, the uprights are fixed in place by means of these concrete screws, which um, at 180 millimeters I thought they were enough. But actually, I think I could have done with at least another 20 or uh, maybe even another 100 mil. The, um, there's a big gap in the behind this kind of pegboard stuff here of about two inches before it actually hits the brick. And of course, you've got to have something here to anchor the the, the heads of those. So actually, the um, there's half of the two by four. That's two inches plus the two inch gap. So that's a hundred mil off. Um, off the length of this before it even hits the brick. So I've got probably somewhere of the region of 80 mil of this going into brick, which should be enough. And it felt very strong in some places, but it didn't feel so good in other places. Uh, you had to drill a six mil pilot hole for these, or in some places I had to drill a seven mil hole. Um, that was about it. The method of getting it all up was fairly straightforward. 
just offer a straight bit of timber up. Um, if I look down here, you can see it's not exactly perfect, but it's good enough. It's fine. Um, discovered a neat trick with the um, with a box spanner. You can basically tighten these up almost uh, fully tight with a box spanner with your hand. And then having done that, you only need one or two turns with a standard spanner, and it saves a lot of time. Uh, the principle behind a carriage bolt, I don't know if you know, but a carriage bolt has a square end. And so what happens is, as you tighten it up, it pulls into the wood and locks into position. So that's why I use these. Another reason I use those. I think that's it. If you've got any comments or questions, let me know. I'll put some links in the description. And um, yeah, there we go. So hopefully, going to be a really good, um, a really good place with all my stuff to store all my wood. Thanks. Uh, just a little technical addendum there to the um, the situation with the concrete screws. These were uh, easy drive concrete screws um, ordered from Screwfix. Pretty good stuff. Uh, they say in the box seven and a half by 150 mil. Uh, so yeah, six mil pilot hole. And I drove these using uh, a new Makita drill. So I was actually quoted um, about 1,400 pounds for this design um, in metal. And I basically decided, well, the cost of this uh, impact driver uh, plus the wood I'd still save probably 1200 pounds more well, maybe uh, 1100 pounds anyway I'd save an awful lot um, and I still ended up with quite a lot of wood because I bought double the quantity of the two by fours because uh, I knew that some of them would be a bit warped but anyway I like doing that anyway because you end up with some nice wood and uh, you can use it for other projects Anyway, the technical addendum is basically this tool here. It's a fantastic, um, fantastic purchase. I never really, um, I knew about these impact drivers, but I never really had one before. Uh, but they do make an enormous difference, especially when um, you're driving something into brick. Uh, driving screws and everything is really good as well in wood. But these, um, these concrete screws um, go really, really well into the... Um, into the, into the brick. So what the, the, the technique was that I basically drilled, uh, first of all I pre-drilled this with a um, like an 8mm hole ready to accept the, the screw and then a slightly bigger hole to make sure there was enough clearance for the head, I can't remember what it was, maybe 10 millimeters. So I'd end up with a, a 10 millimeter hole halfway through then fi the final pass was just enough, about an 8mm hole to accept the screw and then get that up to the wall and uh, use a, a very long masonry bit with a, um, with a standard hammer drill SDS bit, 6mm to actually drill into the wall and then having got that far then you can drive the um, you can drive the um, the screw through the wood through the gap at the back and into the into the brick. Sorry if this um, video is a bit wobbly. I'm trying to film and move these things around at the same time. But that's basically how that was done. Just thought I'd mention that because that's a um, that's a little technical uh, detail there. Uh, but yeah, couldn't have, couldn't. Well, I could have done the job without this, but it would have been an awful lot of work. This made light work of that part of it. So there we go. And here is the finished result. About three weeks later, after much moving of wood and packing, and it's completely overflowing with supplies here more than 
more than enough for a few projects, few boxes and whatnot. As you can possibly see, I have a terrible habit of keeping little offcuts. If there's any chance I think a, an offcut might be used for something, I'll keep it. Um, if we zoom in here, you can see I've even kept little things like this, which um, might be useful for making noggings or um, uh, calls, as the, some people call them. And uh, you know, I've got a mixture of softwoods there, hardwoods, some lamination projects in that plastic. There's some balsa wood and things. There's a half-finished project in there to do with um, a box making jig. So somewhere in there, there's some plans that I printed out. And then down at the very lower end, actually resting on the floor, is uh, some really, really long pieces of hardwood, um, sort of 12 feet long, 2 feet wide, 2 inches thick kind of thing. I don't think you can actually see that as behind all this, um, all those hoovers and things. So yeah, pretty, pretty impressed actually with the carrying capacity of all of this. Um, just about managed to get all my wood onto it. Uh, it's sort of, what, five shelves high, four or five shelves high, and uh, yeah, I think I'm going to be moving soon, so when I move it into its new final location, I'll try and make it a bit longer, and maybe, maybe one more shelf higher, but very happy with the end result.